Kamala Harris is the only candidate in this race who has the vision, the experience, the temperament, the will, and yes, the sheer joy to get something done. I mean, look, what does her opponent do with his voice? He mostly talks about himself, right? So the next time you hear him, don't count the lies. Count the eyes. <laughs> count the eyes. His vendettas, his vengeance, his complaints, his conspiracies. He's like one of those tenors opening up before he walks out on stage, like I did, trying to get his lungs open by singing, me, 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 me. <laughs> when Kamala Harris is president, every day will begin with you, 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 you. <laughs> Joe Biden. Thank you. And he kept the faith and he infected a lot of the rest of us. Now let's cut to the chase. I am too old to gill the lily. Two days ago, I turned 78, the oldest man in my family of four generations. And the only personal vanity I want to assert is I'm still younger than Donald Trump. The parable of January 6 reminds us that our democracy is only as strong as the courage and commitment of those entrusted with its care. And we must choose leaders who believe in free and fair elections, who respect the peaceful transfer of power. The choice couldn't be clearer. Those leaders are Vice President Harris and Governor Walls. When the sun rose on January 7th, as our national anthem declares, we gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Now, in this election, we are called upon to do the same, to stand together, to reject autocracy, to choose democracy, and we will do so by electing a Democratic House with Hakeem Jeffries as Speaker of the House. <laughs> electing a Democratic Senate, electing Tim Walls as Vice President of the United States. And electing Kamala Harris as the President of the United States. to victory. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon, we're going to be teaching our daughters and sons about how this child of an Indian mother and a Jamaican father, two idealistic, energetic immigrants, immigrants, how this child grew up to become the 47th President of the United States. That is the best of America. This election isn't about us and them. It's about you and me.
and what we want our futures to look like. There are choices to be made when we cast our ballot. Now, there's a certain candidate that says, if we just go to the polls this one time, <laughs> that we'll never have to do it again. Well, you know what? You're looking at a registered independent who's proud to vote again and again and again because I'm an American and that's what Americans do. <laughs> Voting is the best of America. And I have always, since I was eligible to vote, I've always voted my values. And that is what is needed in this election now more than ever. So I'm calling on all you independents and all you undecideds. You know this is true. You know I'm telling you the truth, that values and character matter most of all. In leadership and in life. And more than anything, you know this is true, that decency and respect are on the ballot in 2024. And and just plain common sense. Common sense tells you that Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz can give us decency and respect. They're the ones that give it to us. So, we are Americans. We are Americans. Let us choose loyalty to the Constitution over loyalty to any individual. Because, because that's the best of America. And let us choose optimism over cynicism because that's the best of America. And let us choose inclusion over retribution. Let us choose common sense over nonsense. Because that's the best of America. Don't even get me started on his new running mate. At least Mike Pence was polite. <laughs> J.D. Vance is one of those guys who thinks if you don't live the life that he has in mind for you, then you don't count. Someone who said that if you don't have kids, you have, quote, no physical commitment to the future of this country. You know, Senator, when I deployed to Afghanistan, I didn't have kids then. Many of the men and women who went outside the wire with me didn't have kids either. But let me tell you, our commitment to the future of this country was pretty damn physical. J.D. Vance, to be America's next vice president, sends a message. And the message is that they are doubling down on negativity and grievance. Committing to a concept of campaigning best summed up in one word, darkness. Darkness is what they are selling. The thing is, I just don't believe that America today is in the market for darkness. I believe America is ready for a better kind of politics. Thank you, first of all, to Vice President Harris. Thanks for putting your trust in me and for inviting me to be part of this incredible campaign. And a thank you to President Joe Biden for four years of strong, historic leadership. It's, it's the honor of my life to accept your nomination for Vice President of the United States.
We're all, we're all here tonight for one beautiful, simple reason. We love this country. So thank you to all of you here in Chicago and all of you watching at home tonight. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for your determination. And most of all, thank you for bringing the joy to this fight. I believe in the Second Amendment, but I also believe our first responsibility is to keep our kids safe. That's what this is all about. The responsibility we have to our kids, to each other, and to the future that we're building together, in which everyone is free to build the kind of life they want. But not everyone has that same sense of responsibility. Some folks just don't understand what it takes to be a good neighbor. Take Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. Their project 2025 will make things much, much harder for people who are just trying to live their lives. They spent a lot of time pretending they know nothing about this. But look, I coached high school football long enough to know and trust me on this. When somebody takes the time to draw up a playbook, they're gonna use it. And, and we know if these guys get back in the White House, they'll start jacking up the costs on the middle class, they'll repeal the Affordable Care Act, they'll gut Social Security and Medicare, and they will ban abortion across this country with or without Congress. Here's the thing. It's an agenda nobody asked for. It's an agenda that serves nobody except the richest and the most extreme amongst us. And it's an agenda that does nothing for our neighbors in need. Is it weird? Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's also wrong. And it's dangerous. It's not just me saying so. It's Trump's own people. They were with him for four years. They're warning us that the next four years will be much, much worse. If you're a middle class family or a family trying to get into the middle class, Kamala Harris is going to cut your taxes. If you're getting squeezed by prescription drug prices, Kamala Harris is going to take on Big Pharma. If you're hoping to buy a home, Kamala Harris is going to help make it more affordable. And no Folks, we've got a chance to make Kamala Harris the next president of the United States. But I think we owe it to the American people to tell them exactly what she'd do as president before we ask them for their votes. So here, this is the part, clip and save it and send it to your undecided relatives so they know. If you're a middle class family or a family trying to get into the middle class, Kamala Harris is going to cut your taxes. If you're getting squeezed by prescription drug prices, Kamala Harris is going to take on Big Pharma. If you're hoping to buy a home, Kamala Harris is going to help make it more affordable. And no matter who you are, Kamala Harris is going to stand up and fight for your freedom to live the life that you want to lead. Because that's what we want for ourselves, and it's what we want for our neighbors.